So, today is game three of the NBA Finals. If the Los Angeles Lakers win today, they go 3-0 up. And there's no chance the Miami Heat are coming back from being up, being down 3-0. Like, weird things happen in sports when there's no fans. If you guys are fans of the Premier League, um, so far, Leeds United have looked like one of the best teams in um, the entire league. These are these Leeds. Um, and Liverpool have just lost 7-2 to Aston Villa, who nearly got relegated last year. But as crazy as things can happen, it, I don't think a 3-0 comeback in the NBA Finals against a LeBron and Anthony Davis-led team is going to happen. So if they win tonight, it is series over. So the conversation is going to be about LeBron James. Who's LeBron's best ever teammate and is Anthony Davis his best? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about his five best ever teammates. I'm not going to be talking about who the best player was that played with him. I'm talking about who were the best teammates for LeBron James. Because, uh, spoiler alert, the best player to have ever played with LeBron James is Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade will go down higher all-time than any player LeBron James has ever played with. Unless you want to count the year he played with what was, whatever was left with Shaq in 2010. So... In my opinion, Dwayne Wade is just the best player, but that doesn't necessarily mean he was the best fit with LeBron. He might be, he might not be, but that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about in this video. So I have a title of NBA Finals because this has been one of the biggest, um, the biggest conversations throughout the NBA Finals and throughout these NBA playoffs. So it is definitely, definitely relevant, especially because if LeBron, unless LeBron James averages 45 points a game for the next two games, if it's a sweep, he, people will still say he was Kari Banty Davis. So now we're going to go on to the top five teammates. And everyone kind of knows who the top four is. And a lot of people are going to expect that guy on the far right to be in this, Kevin Love. Man, Kevin Love is not. He made a good defensive play on Curry. But man, you cannot, you cannot compare Kevin Love to Zydrunas Ilgauskas as far as being one of LeBron James' teammates. So, Zydrunas Ilgauskas was not only his teammate all through his young days in Cleveland, he also came with him to Miami and was part of the roster that ended up making that first NBA Finals. As well as that, um, Zydrunas Ilgauskas was a big reason, was a big like part of the recruitment to get LeBron James back to Cleveland. The two of them were incredibly close because Zydrunas Ilgauskas was an all-star when LeBron got there. LeBron's first year in the NBA, he wasn't an all-star, but before he was in the NBA, he was joining a team with Ogauskas, who was already an all-star. And then LeBron James' first all-star appearance in 2005, so Junas Ogauskas was also an all-star. Ogauskas was definitely one of the best players, or one of the better centers in the NBA. I'm not going to say he was like Shaq level, Yao Ming level, because he wasn't. Was he even Jermaine O'Neal level at that time? No. But at the end of the day, he was probably a... Seven or eight best cent seventh or eighth best center in the NBA, and was that like le veteran leader on the team when there was a young LeBron James? So you cannot um, forget about that. Also, was a pretty decent player um, when LeBron James made the NBA Finals 2007. Although he was getting on a little bit in age, he was 31, but at 73, um, he really kind of struggled to move a lot from that from that season onwards. But we had a bit of a renaissance the next year where he averaged. 14.1 on the year after that where he averaged 12.9 again but especially in Miami he started a lot of the season didn't start towards the end and kind of like fizzled out in the playoffs a little bit in 10 11 either way though he deserves a spot on this list over Kevin Love he deserves a spot because of what he did for LeBron's development and um, how he was that kind of all-star level leader on LeBron's first team as well as the fact he was with him for two his first two NBA finals so Elgauskas, number five. Number four, and I had a tough time deciding where to put this guy because it was a very close one between him and one. It was actually, it was a close one. I think number one is a just clear, clear winner, but number two, three, and four is really, really tough. So Chris Bosh, I'm not even talk, gonna talk about Chris Bosh's numbers because Chris Bosh was clearly the number three um, on that Miami Heat team. However, you can definitely argue that in 2014, no question about it, he was better than Dwayne Wade. When they lost to the San Antonio Spurs, he was without question the number two option on that Miami Heat team. I don't think anyone's really going to argue that. However, you can make an argument in that second ring. Not only did he, if he, did he outplay Dwayne Wade, 
But he also um, had a bigger moment with the block, with the rebound before he kicked Ray Allen, as well as blocking Danny Green. And you can make the argument of him over Dwayne Wade, no question about it, as far as fit with LeBron James. Chris Bosh was not much of a shooter. He turned into one with this Miami Heat team. The fact all his sacrifices for the team, his importance to this Miami Heat team was absolutely incredible. And it was shown the next year when LeBron left, and the guy was, without question, better than Dwayne Wade. He was the best player on that Miami Heat team. And had not been for blood clots, who knows, that team when they got to Goran Dragic, who was playing an all-star level, could have given that 2015 injured Cavs team a run for their money. Don't think they would have beaten them, but it would have been a close, close series. So, yeah, Chris Bosh in here at number four, mainly because I think it's... While I do think he was definitely better in the last year with um, LeBron... It was debatable the second last year who was better, him or Wade. Playoffs, I'd say, Chris Bosh, regular season Wade. First two years, definitely, no question about it, Wade was um, the number two player and was better than Chris Bosh. So for that reason, number three is Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is the best player to ever play with LeBron James. You could argue him at number two or even number one in terms of impact on LeBron James, just his mentality towards basketball getting him to Miami, teaching him how to win. But in terms of on-court play, they didn't fit. They just did not fit together. And the whole thing was, the first two years, they were two of the best players in the NBA, especially that first year. So no question about it, Dwayne Wade belongs in his top five. If you want to argue number one, I'm not going to hold against you. But their play styles did not really fit as well together as the guys that are number two and number one. As well as that, for two of the years that Wade played with LeBron, he just wasn't the same. In the 2013 playoffs, until up until Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals, he did not score 20 points in a single game in that playoffs. He literally went. He went a four-game series, a five-game series, and six games. So he played 15 games without scoring 20 points in a single one. Dwayne Wade, um, like, I'm old enough to remember, like, what happened in 2013. There was a lot of people that just thought he was past it and he was done. He did step up big time in a couple of those games in the NBA Finals against the Spurs, but he just wasn't himself. So Dwayne Wade and LeBron really had one year of them both in their like in their primes primes. I'm not going to say 2011 LeBron because he had a different mentality in 2012. I'm going to say 2012, one year and both in their primes and they won a ring and won it somewhat comfortably in the finals after getting to a tough Eastern Conference. But at the end of the day, I think just in terms of fit, you got to put Wade at number three. And at number two is Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving, man, in terms of offense, Kyrie was a 1A, 1B situation with LeBron James. In terms of, actually, in terms of scoring the ball. And let's just say that, in terms of scoring, scoring the ball. In the 2016 NBA Finals, Kyrie Irving, apart from a game two where he only had 10 points, which was a bit of a disaster, he had... 30 in game three, 34 in game four, 41 in game five, which the four, the game five 41 points was huge because that was what started the run. In game seven, he also had 26 points and hit one of the biggest shots in NBA history. That's step back three. So yeah, Kyrie Irving in terms of direct impact on a ring, just that 2016 finals was crazy. But we can't forget 2017 where Kyrie Irving in game three, a game three was a rough one because that was the one where LeBron kicked to Kyle Korver, which to this day, if you say that's the wrong basketball play, you don't know basketball. And then Korver missed a shot to put the Cleveland Cavaliers up five. Then Kevin Durant came down, hit a shot in LeBron's face. That kind of ended the series. Had Cleveland won that game and then played like they did in game four, it would have been two all and you just never know. But Kyrie Irving had a 38 point game in that game. As well as that, he had 40 points in the game four, which is the one game they won in that series. Like, Dwayne Wade wasn't pulling out those numbers. He was not pulling out those numbers in after 2012. 2012, Dwayne Wade had the big game against Indiana in the closeout. But man, I think Kyrie Irving, for those two years with LeBron, was just that little, that little bit ahead of Dwayne Wade in terms of production. Um, as well as that, I just feel that Kyrie fit better because... 
I felt a little bit when Wade was going, when Wade had it going, LeBron kind of had to take a back seat, but I felt when Kyrie, it was a lot more off common to see Kyrie and LeBron both have it going and to see LeBron and Dwayne Wade. So yeah, that's why Kyrie's there. And number one, let me explain. We have Anthony Davis. He is the perfect second star for LeBron James at the stage he is in in his career right now. This is well and truly a 1A, 1B scenario. No question about it, LeBron was better than Wade. LeBron was better than Kyrie. This is a 1A, a 1B. Anthony Davis is the rim protector. He is the, the better player at just getting you a bucket. He can play off the ball. He does not need the ball to be effective. He's not a post player that's going to be destroying people inside. He's going to be able to hit you from mid. He's going to take you on the perimeter. He's going to score a lot without dominating the ball. As well as that, he spaces out the floor enough that LeBron can be LeBron. He's a great defensive player. And he just is allowing LeBron to thrive at this stage in his career. There is... Man, it's, it's hard even just to explain how good a fit these two guys are for each other right now. And that's the whole thing. Is is Anthony Davis... Uh, I was going to say, is he going to have a better career than Wade? But you never know. And what age is Anthony Davis now? 26? If AD... What happens if LeBron and AD win this year? And they win next year? And they win a third ring in a row? Imagine if a 37-year-old LeBron James goes and wins three rings in a row with Anthony Davis. I'd say this, this year, in my opinion, LeBron is the better player just because of the fact that he just kind of controls the entire game. But I'd say next season, it will be without question a LeBron playing backup to Anthony Davis in terms of being the star. And who knows, Anthony Davis might have two finals MVPs and three rings by the time he's 30. So then he's in that Dwayne Wade conversation. So um, yeah, that is pretty much it. LeBron James has had some incredible teammates. He really has. You can't even forget some of the guys like Ray Allen who hit the, one of the most clutch shots. You can't forget the fact that Shane Battier, Game 7 of 2013 Finals, lit, lit them up. You Or lit the Spurs up. You can't forget that 2012 NBA Finals Game 5, everyone was just a sniper. So LeBron James has had some incredible, incredible teammates. Some of them have fit, some of them haven't. But one of the crazy things is, is that LeBron James might win, might have four rings with three different franchises and four finals MVPs. If he wins four, three finals MVPs with three different franchises, it would just be crazy. As well as winning a ring with the Los Angeles Lakers, that means that, that little bit more. So anyway, yeah, that is the video. Any of these, take out Elgowskis and you could make an argument for any of these fives as number one teammate. But in my opinion, just from what I've seen this season, it's going to be Anthony Davis, especially what I project is going to happen over the next two years as LeBron goes older, gets older and AD gets better. I think this is going to be even more obvious in a couple of years. But anyway, yep, that is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.